So this is going to be one of the more important lectures we do here at www.free-academy.com. And this is going to be on the basics or the introduction to the integral. We're not going to do any actual integration in this lecture. So if you're using this as a reference, you're going to want to look forward at the reverse power rules and things like that. But um, for those of you who have never heard of the integral before, another name for it is the antiderivative. And as I have it written out here, it, this implies it's the reverse of the derivative. So if you have the derivative of a function, and you take the integral of it, you get back the original function. Plus c. <laughs> I'll explain that a little bit. Um, and the flip side of it, if you take the integral of a function and you take the derivative of it, you get back the original function. Now you're probably asking me, you know, wondering, what is the deal with the c at this point? Well, let me explain it to you. Let's take you, say you take the derivative of x to the third. And that equals 3x squared. So you take the integral of 3x squared expecting to get x to the third back to it. But here's the reason why you have the c. If you take the derivative of x to the third plus 6, your derivative is 3x squared. And to take the integral of that, you would need to get x to the third plus 6 back to get the same thing. But you don't have enough information to get the plus 6. You know you're going to get some kind of constant out of it. The constant can be 6, 10, 114, or 0. But you don't have enough information. So whenever you take the integral of something, you're always going to add the plus c. And that's going to account for that uh, constant there. Now, let me erase this little bit at the bottom here. And go into some of the more specifics of the integral. Our notation that we use when doing the derivative was d by dx. The dx there states with respect to x. This, by the way, is a notation with respect to. It comes up a lot, so you know, get used to it. And the d just stood for derivative. Now, the reason that this is important is because you could take the d uh, derivative of something with respect to y. And let's say that is x squared. Well, if you're taking the derivative with respect to y, your x squared is a constant, so that would equal 0. However, if it was x squared y, then it would equal x squared. Now, seeing as we're doing single variable calculus, that doesn't really come up at all. A um, little bit in implicit differentiation there. But it's just one of the formalisms that's used. So by the same logic, when you use your symbol for your integral, you're going to put the dx in to state what variable you're integrating with. And uh, that is, mo typically we sandwich the f of x between it. But truth be told, you could do the integral of dx f of x, because really the two are multiplied. In fact, it'll come up when you take the derivative of 1 over x dx, Oftentimes you'll see it written as the integral of dx over x. So we have notation and we have the plus c. Oh yes, another thing that I wanted to deal with really quick. I'll probably restate this in the next lecture, but uh, just so we have all the rules. But if you take the integral of a constant times a function, you can pull the constants out in front of the integral, just like with the derivative. We don't really worry about those at all. And the other thing is if you take the integral 
of two functions added together or subtracted, you can parse those out into two separate integrals. Now, little disclaimer, and then we're going to wrap everything up here. There is no product rule or quotient rule or I don't think there's really even a chain rule I mean we have some type of equivalence to it but if you have an uh, integral of f of x times g of x you know there's like no f of x g of x plus an integral of g and f doesn't exist. It's way more complicated. That's why I kept saying there's no formulas for integrals. We will be learning some formulas, um, but basically the formulas we're going to be using are going to be manipulated from our derivative formulas to apply them in reverse. With integrals, you have techniques, not formulas. This is, should be very reminiscent of your pre-calculus or your algebra 2 where you're solving these complex trigonometric equations and trying to condense them down to sines or cosines. You know, there isn't like a step-by-step -step formula to get through it. You have to know that uh, you have to factor everything out in a certain way to get sine squared plus cosine squared to reduce that to 1, things of that nature. It's that kind of stuff. So that's why most people think of integrals as being a pain but hopefully we'll make it a little bit easier for you guys.